The default color space for canvas elements is now formally defined as sRGB, and you can change it to display P3. There's a new low-level way to access built-in audio and video codecs, important for streaming games, video editors, and so forth. WebGPU starts its origin trial, and there's plenty more. I'm Pete LePage. Let's dive in and see what's new for developers in Chrome 94. How color is rendered on screen is critical to some users. For photographers, print illustrators, and many others, the colors on screen need to match what's printed. Starting in Chrome 94, canvas elements are now fully color managed using sRGB. Previously, sRGB was the convention, but it wasn't explicitly defined in the spec. More importantly, you can now specify which color space to use when creating a canvas rendering context 2D object or image data objects, including using the P3 color space. Putting video on a page is easy enough, but if you need to do something a little bit more complex and interact with the components of a video stream, it's a little bit harder and typically requires you to use WebAssembly to ship your own codecs. But shipping your own codec means writing code that the browser already has, and it can't take advantage of hardware acceleration. The Web Codex API makes it possible to use media components and codecs that are already in the browser. For web apps that require full control over the way media content is processed, like video editors, video conferencing apps, streaming apps, and so on, this is huge. Showing anything useful in 30 seconds is kind of hard, so check out video processing for web codecs on web.dev for a deep dive with lots of code and a few cool demos. By the way, have you signed up for the PWA Summit on October 6th and 7th? There's a great lineup of speakers and content. I hope to see you there. WebGPU is a new API that exposes modern graphics capabilities, specifically Metal, Direct3D, 12, and Vulkan. You can think of it like WebGL, but it provides access to more advanced features of the GPU, and it also provides support for performing general computations on the GPU. It's starting an origin trial in Chrome 94, and both Safari and Firefox are currently working on their implementation. Francois has a great article on web.dev with the details and compares performance of matrix multiplication running on the CPU versus the GPU. Here's a hint, the GPU wins. Of course, there's plenty more. The prioritize scheduler.post task method allows you to schedule tasks and dynamically cancel them or change their priorities. If you've ever fought with a relayout when scroll bars appear, the scroll bar gutter property will make you happy. It provides control over the presence of scroll bar gutters, allowing you to prevent layout changes as content expands. The use of WebSQL in third-party contexts is now deprecated, and removal is expected in Chrome 97. WebSQL itself will be deprecated and removed when the usage is low enough. So if you're still using WebSQL, now would be a good time to start planning your migration off of it. And the Virtual Keyboard API gives you more control over how and when the virtual on-screen keyboard is shown. It allows you to explicitly control any scrolling behavior or changes to layout when the keyboard appears and disappears. All the details, including links, docs, and specs, are in the updates post linked in the description, really this time. Hit that subscribe button now so that you don't miss the latest Chrome DevTools video, HTTP 203, and more. I'm Pete LePage, and as soon as Chrome 95 is released, you're right here to tell you what's new in Chrome. <laughs>